Hello, it's Patrick here from the GarageBandGuide.com. Apple have just updated GarageBand to version 10.2, and there's a few changes to get your head around. This is the first video in a three-part series where I'll cover all the new stuff and changes to the old stuff so you can get right back to making awesome projects in GarageBand. In this video, I'm checking out GarageBand's new modern interface. So with this update, Apple have given GarageBand a refreshed look. But if you've used any of their other audio programs like Logic or Mainstage, things might look a little familiar. Logic Pro 10 was updated at the start of this year with the same flat, straightforward interface and it seems like Apple have slapped the same look onto GarageBand. It also sees the end of Apple's skeuomorphic design philosophy that they had going on for a while there. Remember when everything looked like it was made from leather or wood or paper? Instead, you're now working with this clean, straightforward design that I personally really like, actually. Don't worry though, everything is pretty much where you left it. There's no need to change your workflow or anything. Your keyboard shortcuts are all the same, and while a few of the buttons have moved around, they're all generally in the same place. Apple have made a few interface improvements as well that will definitely help you out. Resizing and looping your regions is now much easier with the inclusion of contextual controls that pop up when you hover your cursor over the edge of a region. Finding and using these controls makes looping your regions or resizing them much easier than in previous versions. Another small addition that makes your life a lot easier, you can now open any track smart controls by simply double clicking on that track's track header. If you use GarageBand on a smaller screen, you'll appreciate Apple including the master volume slider no matter the size of the GarageBand window. I use a 13 inch MacBook Pro and found myself having to resize the window to get the master volume to appear in previous versions. A stupid design choice that has thankfully been remedied in this update. The Loop Browser has also had a design refresh with instrument, genre and moods having been separated into their own submenus. This keeps things a bit cleaner and less cluttered than in previous versions. There you have it. That's an overview of the interface changes in GarageBand 10.2. Still to come in this three-part series, I'll look at the new drummers that have been added changes to the drummer track itself and the inclusion of yellow drummer loops to the loop browser. I'll also be diving into the new track sharing options between GarageBand 10.2 on macOS and GarageBand 2.2 on iOS. If you found this video helpful, then leave a like. I really do appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, then now's a great time to do so. We've got a ton of new GarageBand videos coming your way every single week. And don't forget to hit the wee bell icon to make sure that you don't miss a thing. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.